Hey guys, today we are looking at how to build and assemble this cottage kit uh, done in conjunction with Ian from White Shark Gaming Studios. If you've seen his video um, versus mine, you'll notice that we've built the house slightly differently, which is great, which is why it's a craft your own kit. And also he assembled his with the letters on the inside, I assembled mine with the letters on the outside, and we've ended up with a, a mirrored house, which is great because you can do the kit both ways. Um, all the parts needed for this are in the kit, uh, with the exception of glue and a couple of basic tools. Um, so let's dive into how we build this. The first up, we'll just quickly go through what's in the kit. So you get three different sizes of bricks. These I've just textured by shaking them in the box with some rocks, but they're all pre-cut if you choose the pre-cut option. Uh, we've got some balsa sticks uh, here in both the plank uh, and beam form. And for making all the plaster, we've got the foam already cut to size on a hot wire cutter to make things easy. We've got a laser cut sheet of both the window frames and the door and details, including this really nice lattice leading. And we've got some 3D printed details in the form of torches and uh, wall sconces and candles and things to decorate the, the outside with. And we have a frame, which is what's gonna build the structure of our building before we detail it. And finally, a sheet with some shingles and a roof card. And on top of all of these bits that you get in the kit, there are a couple of small things that you'll need from your own hobby stash. Uh, one is some glue. This is just a pot of regular um, builder's PVA glue, which works excellently. Um, we need a ruler uh, for keeping things as straight as we can, but there's very minimal cutting to be done here. And a hobby knife, which of course has got a nice fresh blade in it. Uh, I've got two brushes, just skanky old ones for doing the gluing and I'm gonna use a wire brush to add a little bit of extra texture to the bolster, though it's not needed, it just makes it look a little bit fancier. Um, a square or protractor of some sort if you have one to aid with some cutting, and a ball of tin foil which will be used to make the plaster texture. So first stage is going to be to deal with the building. So these come on pre-cut sheets and you can see that they're lettered uh, with their build order, um, with all the lettering going on the outside. So my first step is going to be to pop them all out because they're three, uh, they're laser cut, sorry, um, but they are on a nice little frame that you just pop out like that. Right, your next step is to lay it out like this so the letters vaguely match and then it makes sense as we start doing this in alphabetical order. So what we'll do is we will take these pieces, we will take the two A pieces like this, they'll go together to form a right angle and what will happen is you'll want to put glue on the joining tabs. Now you can use PVA glue so that there's a nice snug fit like that or you can masking tape the joint and fold it like this and hold it like this and then use super glue if you want a quick set. I would avoid using hot glue on the actual join parts otherwise they won't make properly uh, but if you want to do hot glue down the inside to strengthen it up uh, you absolutely can. So I will uh, work on putting the first few pieces together now using these lettuce tabs in order to help us do it in the right order. So again probably going to just time lapse that a little. Right, and then after less than five minutes build work, we're at the stage now where you've got the sides on, you've got the overhang end uh, sticking out nicely, and actually, even though it's just got a little bit of PVA glue on, the frame is actually holding together really nicely, thanks to um, uh, Ian's designs. And so the next thing to do is going to be to put uh, these roof pieces in here. Um, so I will glue those two in there and I'll do this again on a time lapse in a moment, and we'll just glue those in, and then one thing that holds everything together after you're done with this stage is to use these little bracer pieces. And when you've got the kit, you'll notice they're all marked as your K at this stage, except there's one that's marked E. And this one is the one you're gonna have to put in before you get to these. And this is the one that goes right down the middle like this, uh, putting it through that hole, through that hole, and then I would adhere this personally. I would choose to put a little bit of super glue uh, on the inside joints here just so that it sets up nice and fast, which is probably what I'll do. Um, that'll let you get the last pieces on and then you're ready for the roof card. As you can see, that went together nice and easily. Uh, I haven't actually built this kit before. It's my first time building it to do the demo for, for how to work with it. And it was of Ian's design for the house. And you can see how well it's, uh, well it's thought out by Ian because it went together super easily. The last thing I've got to do now is put the chimney uh, on the outside. But between the PVA glue and the fit of the joints, um, it's already, and this has literally been done live in the last 10 minutes, 
uh, holding itself together really nicely. So I will now just get uh, the chimney done. Again, we're just going to match the parts up. So I like to dry fit everything. So first of all, get it the right way up. I can see how it's going to go together like that, but obviously it's going to be at this angle here. And then uh, we'll get that on mounted to the side like that, and then we'll uh, we'll be good to go. Very quick step now. I've just taped together the two roof pieces um, so that they bend. Uh, this is masking tape. You could use sticky tape, so it's not going to stay on there permanently, just to give them a nice hinge effect. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue on the rafters here across, slot the roof piece on, and let that dry. And then that'll give us a nice base to put the shingles on, and then we'll move on to the foam bricks. And you can apply the bricks here in quite a few different ways. I'm going to actually go with using the thicker of the three brick sizes that come in the set. And I'm going to put a course along the bottom. So it's just a simple case of putting on the PVA glue, applying the bricks in a nice little row. I'll put a row along here and then I will stand it down the tabletop just to make sure it's a nice flat surface. But it's very easy going. We're just going to apply the bricks all the way along until we get to the end and then we will overshoot slightly and then what we'll do is we will cut off the brick. So I'm going to slide the row up a little bit so we've got an overhang this end for making the corner. Put this a little bit more glue on there because it's just started to dry. This glue dries very quick, this PVA that I'm using and then set it down and just push them flat and then can carry on with the next side. That one's a little wonky on the corner so I'll just push it flat again, get some glue, once again go on with the glue in a line like this and then start forming the next row of bricks and again if I've got a little overshoot there that needs adjusting we can just slide the bricks up for the first five minutes or so whilst the glue is just setting up and then we can make the nice corner and I'll do this all the way down and then what we'll do is we'll randomly use the other sized bricks mix and match to make the actual wall so this will kind of look like the foundation of the building and then the rest of it will be the other detailed bits so while the glue is drying on that first layer of blocks, it's a really good time to look at prepping all the window pieces. So these are the frames for the windows and doors. Um, so they're laser cut, so you just need to punch out um, the parts. I will do a window as an example here. What we've got is we've got this piece, which is the frame piece. So you twist out the middle bit and you'll want to get rid of the middle section. And there'll be two of these per window and what we're going to do is then punch out the cross pieces like this and then it's time to choose which type of leading you want in your window there's two options there's one with the grid running this way and there's one with the diagonal one I'm going to go with the diagonal one personally for this because it feels more traditional uh, for a fantasy setting um, but I think this would be a bit more realistic um, so we go with this one if there's some little pieces that remain in there you can just get any old brush um, and just poke out the pieces like that um, until the um, window is empty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich everything together. So we'll start by taking this piece, and you've usually got a darker and a lighter size. We'll try and stick to using the two the same sides. It's just basically whatever way up the MDF was when it was cut. And then I'm going to just brush on some glue, not getting blobs anywhere, but getting a good coverage on the back of this piece here and then just tidy up any bits in between that have got too much glue on them. And then press that on to the window leading. And then just repeat that uh, here around the edge of the window leading. And then on the back of the other frame. Like this. This is probably a slightly more sensible amount of glue this time around. And then sandwich them together so you get a nice layered look to your windows. And then we will put a little bit more glue around the outside of the frame and put the final piece on. And then we'll do the same on the other side, make a nice little window sandwich. If you have a square of some sort now, it'd be a good time to use it, but if not, you can just use your fingers. This is a rickety old uh, world look anyway. And then you've got a frame with your window inside, and this is gonna be the right thickness 
that when we've got the um, foam on the uh, walls, it will be nicely uh, recessed into the window. And in a similar way, we're gonna approach the doors. So there's two uh, main door pieces, there's two planking pieces, and then there's a detailing piece. So again, I'm gonna create the sandwich, and I'll uh, do this in a time-lapse because it'll be quicker. Sandwich with the pieces like this, and put the detailing piece on the outside, and that's your door done. Okay, now this has had a chance to dry, we need to come in with our sharp knife, and where we have overhangs here, we're just gonna use the frame um, as a straight edge of which to cut. And this is why we need a nice sharp knife because this foam is pretty dense stuff. And then we're just gonna shave that in line with that. And obviously here we're now left with what looks like a very clean cut, which we definitely don't want. Q tin foil. What we'll do is just gently use one of the pokey edges to just roll it over there and just adds that nice stone texture. Um, and any bricks that you do see that have not got quite enough texture on them, because when you rattle them in the can with rocks, it can be pretty random. Uh, just roll over them with this ball and you'll find that it takes the texture nicely. And then we're gonna go around the building and do this wherever there's an overlap. So here on the edge, for example, we don't have a hard edge to cut up against, but again, using a sharp knife, we're just gonna take that brick off like that and then use the tin foil to make sure that the edge is not square. If we do get little bits where it's just a little loose at the bottom there, don't worry because when we do the paint stage, we mix paint and glue so everything binds together. So now we're free to start building up the random pattern which we'll get on with. Right, MDF can be a bit of a sponge sometimes, so I'm just gonna go over it very lightly with a damp, not wet. Uh, brush just to give it something to soak up before the glue goes on and then what we'll do is we'll start on the corners um, because these are the bits where you need to manage the overlaps to so the perfect place to start so give a decent coat of glue on the corner here and we work in small areas with the glue so that it doesn't dry up depending on what PVA glue you've used the good quality builders type stuff tends to actually dry fairly quickly and then what we're going to do is we're going to get a random assortment of bricks. So we've got them in three different sizes in the set. Uh, this is a 15 by 10. You've got a 10 by 5 here, and you've got a 15 by 5. And what we'll do is we'll just start to randomly arrange them on there. Again, looking at some little overhangs so that you can then on the back end of it put the next brick like that. And then we'll just keep going round like this. And again, having to put on a little bit more glue where it starts to dry or soak in, that's absolutely fine. That means you're gonna get a really good bond. And we're just gonna randomly start arranging the bricks. And because they're all in multiples of five, you'll find that you're able to kind of make the patterns uh, look nice and random, but everything still fits together. So again, we're just sliding them all in and we'll do this all the way around. When we get to a window here, we're gonna make sure that we put a small one in like that but if you then end up with a large one that's overhanging slightly, that's absolutely fine because once the glue's dried in the same way, we'll trim up around the window before we put the window frames in. So let's get this covered and do the whole of the ground floor. Okay, neat trick here to vary up the texture and the patterns. We've got this gap in here. So what I'm actually gonna do is just cut one of the uh, 10 by five mil bricks in half and then just jam that in the hole. You could even leave a hole in one or two places, um, which would look good as like a missing brick. Um, and the other thing that you can do to vary up the texture is to take one of your bricks. Uh, let's put in one of these large ones here. And what we can do is we can just slice using, again, a sharp knife, slice a very small amount off the back of the brick to change its thickness. You don't need to do this too often because it's a bit fiddly, but what we can do is just use this, again, to vary texture because now you've got a different height brick and when you're doing the painting and the dry brushing all of this is going to catch detail um, and all of this is going to look really good and add to the realism look. Right now as we get round to the back side of the house where there's actually no overhang what we need to do is look at how we're going to do the top floor. So the top floor is going to be made out of beams and then textured sheets to make plaster uh, again all in the set but what we need to do is we're going to need to use this piece of uh, balsa wood lined up against these uh, floor pieces from the interior here to set 
the limits uh, where our beam's going to go. And what we'll then do is we'll use that to guide where the bricks go on the lower floor. So taking a nice straight piece of the balsa, what we're going to do is we're going to glue it in here and mark where it goes. So I'm going to hold it so that it's flush on this side. And then take my knife and make a little notch, lining it up with the wall here and cut a little mark. And then what I'm gonna do is use that mark to register with a straight edge. I'm gonna use this square that I have here. You could just use a ruler um, or a protractor or any form of uh, thing that you've got that you could cut straight up against. And we're gonna just do this in a couple of passes like this to cut through the balsa wood. It's got a nice texture on this balsa wood anyway, but we can exaggerate this with a wire brush. So what we're gonna do is gonna get this wire brush, uh, which you can pick up at any pound or dollar store. And we're gonna hold it close to the edge of the bristles uh, for some support and we're just going to take one scrape along the length of the piece of balsa wood like that just to add some extra grain some exaggerated grain and we're going to do that on all four sides so we don't have to worry about the facing and if i hold it up you can see that's giving it just a nice little bit of extra grooves if you find you've got a little bit of fuzz on this most of the time that'll come off with your hands if not a literal brush with a high grade sandpaper will get rid of it um, but I think that actually it kind of adds to the worn look of the wood and so what we'll then do is we'll then get our glue and just put a, a generous amount of glue across where the beam is going to go like this and then we'll affix that beam in place and that if we line it up like this with the uh, dark patches that are the cut through piece of the floor and just press it in place leave that to dry uh, on this side and we'll do the same on this side uh, using again these as your guides to frame out the top so we can complete the bricks all the way around and then when we're done with those bricks and we're trimmed up we'll then move on to doing the beams and plaster on the second floor. And now that glue's had a really good chance to dry what we're going to do again is get the knife and emphasizing the sharpness of the knife here to cut down on the balsa wood and just backwards and forwards. If you have a little hobby saw, this would be perfect um, just to cut that off nice and square. And if you end up with a nice flat edge like this that actually doesn't look very realistic, uh, you can just notch this and scar it up with a knife. And this is a good opportunity to go around and maybe do some nicks and uh, just kind of take off the square edge uh, with your hobby knife. You don't have to do it too much. Be gentle with this because balsa cuts remarkably easily. Um, however, if you do slip and it goes a little bit wrong, you can either stick a bit more back on or it's uh, free weathering. Now that we've gone through and filled out all of the gaps and the various uh, bits of stone and everything is nicely dried, a bit of scrap, and what we've done is we've cut the windows out by running a knife around the inside of the frame. I fitted the front window um, and fitted the door, uh, which I've just adhered in place. I've left the door uh, protruding ever so slightly because what we're going to do now is we're going to frame the door. So there are different ways you can do this. You could use these bricks uh, to make a nice stone frame if you think that would be better and that cut that in and this is where a bit of creativity kind of comes through or we can use uh, the balsa wood that's included in the set. So once again I will just be using a wire brush to add extra grain texture to the balsa wood uh, on both sides. And what I'll be doing here is, first of all, placing it up here and having it so that it overhangs on both sides. And what I will do is I will cut uh, cut it like that. And you can score and snap this balsa wood because it's so thin, which is great. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a small angle here and then match it on the other side to one, tidy up the edges. Um, and to now have uh, an angle on the beam. What you can do here, if you want to make it look a bit more old and weathered again, is just pick at the edges with a knife and then maybe run this just across the top to put a little chamfer uh, on things so the wood looks a little bit more hand cut. Um, and you can take a few notches out if you want to and just again rough up this edge. And then we're going to stick that in place above the door and then we're going to measure the downward pieces. And what we're going to do to measure those is going to place the piece on here um, so that it's uh, nicely flush up against the top here and going to cut it here flush with the bottom which we can always trim after it's glued in place if there's any unevenness at all again you can just snap that and then what I'm going to do is very carefully put this down here and get my straight edge and I'm going to use the grid pattern uh, on the 
cutting mat to kind of line that white line up down the middle. Then I'm going to place my straight edge across the white line as evenly as I can get it to be. And then I'm going to do a light pass to score and then a second pass to cut and split it into the two uprights and then glue those on either side of the door again having weathered them and that gives a nice framing to the door and gives it a little bit of character. You could frame the windows if you so please but I actually like them because the laser cut comes with this little frame piece around the edge anyway and I think once you dry brush that up with some wood textures uh, it's going to look really nice. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to frame out the top floor now um, ready for the plaster work and what we're going to do is we're going to put all the beam pieces in the edges and we're going to start with this corner piece got a little scrap left over here it's the best way to use them up and what you're going to do is you're going to line it up um, so that it's flush up against where it's going to sit like this and it's going to sit up and under the roof but you can see that there is an angle to the roof here so what we're going to want to do is straighten your card out as best you can so that it's on either side of your wood piece and then use your knife to score along that line like that then take it away from the piece put it on your cutting mat where it's got a bit more stability match that and give it a slice and then you'll find that when it comes to gluing it you can glue it so that it tucks under and is corner to corner with the with the wall there and um, because what's going to happen is the plasterboard is going to go in between we're going to frame out the rest of the house so we again we're going to use uh, these markings to line things up as best as possible so we'll do a piece across here uh, cutting a, a line down here to match we'll do one up and under the rafter here um, which says lined up with the top of the window frame don't worry about the cardboard of the roof that's going to get um, where it doesn't look very good at the moment where the shingles overlap it's going to give a nice edge to everything um, and then this and the other piece will help hold this piece up in the corner we'll do the same for the corner piece down here and all the way around and then we'll leave that to dry so that it sets itself up nice and firm and holds everything in place <clears throat> Right, now we're going to do the upright beams. These are the ones that are going in here. I'm putting them around the window frame. Um, if you are also watching the video that Ian's doing, you'll notice he spaced them in between. Um, so you can do them differently to get a bit of variety. But the key thing here with getting the height right is to take your balsa uh, strip, place it against one beam at the bottom here where the beam's actually going to go. And then using your knife to come in here, you want to line the cut up visually with where the beam is there, uh, make your nick, put that on your cutting mat, line it up with one of the lines so that you get a nice square cut. Next thing we're gonna tackle is the plaster that goes in all these recesses left by the structural beams. And in order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to grab your sheets of this uh, thin milled foam that comes in the set. Obviously right now it's got a very smooth, slightly wavy texture that's gonna look horrible as plaster, but that is where the tin foil ball comes in. So this is just a scrunched up ball of any regular tin foil, kitchen foil, whatever you want to call it. What you do is you scrunch it, the sheet first, pull it open again, and then ball it up. So you get these nice jaggedy textures. You don't want a smooth texture. And what we're going to do is we're just going to randomly roll this on here like this. You don't have to push very hard at all. This is a high density foam type, um, one of the high quality ones. So it takes the texture very well. Um, so you can be kind of uh, rough if you want to but not as a starting point go gentle and then add some more harder uh, patches wear suits so we're just going to do this very quickly all over and you can see in the areas where we've kind of gone over it one or two times it's got this lovely texture that will pick up dry brushes and washes amazingly and obviously this is very easy to work with so I'm just going to finish going down this and do a couple more sheets so I've got plenty and then we'll get to the fitting so I've measured my height of the gap on this side at 35 millimeter and I will just cut this. Do you want to do this at a nice shallow angle with your knife um, and take several passes so that you get a clean cut, otherwise the foam will rip. Um, you get a little tiny bit of ripping on this piece but the other piece is cut nice and smooth. So then what we're going to do is we're going to fit this into our recess like this and what we're going to want to do is you're going to want to mark visually at the top and at the bottom where that beam is with a little pet with a little pencil and then cut down and that's going to give us our panel uh, to go in this recess right now that we've cut this you're going to want to test fit the width without pushing it in all the way and you're going to want to test fit 
the height without pushing it in all the way so we know it's going to fit correctly. Uh, there's no point jamming it in there and then it getting stuck. Um, so what we're now going to do is come in with the glue and put a quite generous amount of glue to cover the back area and then slide your foam piece in and just push down. What I do is I get the back of the paintbrush and just very gently because you don't want to leave an impression, push, push like this without dragging it heavily and then you've got a really nice textured piece of plaster in your recess and we're going to do that all the way along. Windows, we'll put them in and then we'll cut them uh, to, again to size using the frame here. So we'll cut uh, this width and then we'll shimmy it down about so it's about here height wise and then we'll cut it to final fit once it's in the window and we'll go all the way around and do these square pieces. Right, having done the main work around here, obviously I'm going to use a leftover scrap in here, we come to doing the end piece. What I do here is I hold the strip in the corner like this and then just run your knife down the back edge using the seal, using the roof as a guide to just score the surface and the same up here, just a little nick like that. Then you can take it down here, use a straight edge, probably this ruler and then make a nice cut that's a lot straighter than the rough one that we just made and then this will help the roof stay in exactly the right shape because this will be holding it up from underneath. <clears throat> And then when we come to this end, what we need to do is we need to divide this in two. So I'm going to put uh, a beam down the middle like this, <clears throat> and I'm going to cut it to length based on the top of the roof here. And then what I'm going to do is use my knife to just shave the, the corners off so it fits nice and snug and comes down to the centre here, and that gives you a nice mark with which to line it all up. Okay, and in order to finish up the gable ends, what we're going to do is take the thinner strips of balsa wood uh, and wedge it up into the corner like that. And then we're going to use our knife and we're going to line it up with the upward beam to get the angle to cut correctly. And what I always do is get it in place like that, drag down to score it, and then cut it directly on your mat so that you've got a nice level surface. And then that will meet up nicely there and then I'll do the same cutting across here to fill in the gable ends here and here and then the one on the back here um, the final kit has a slightly larger overhang here to suit and uh, then we're ready to do the shingles. The next thing the kit comes with is two sheets of these shingles and they are um, just attached at the end here by little tabs and along the side here so what we're going to do is we're going to pull these off uh, the tabs and we're going to bring our house over here and we're going to lay them along the bottom here and we're going to run them up to the edge. Probably should have let that glue dry. It'd be absolutely fine by the time we get these on. And going to run them along the edge here. And what I'll do is I'll note that this is overhanging and I'll break that off. And I will stick this on. And then the next layer will overhang half of a shingle. So I will put this at this end uh, with the cut end or the ripped end outwards and overlay them so they're overlapping by half a shingle this way and so that they're just about covering the, the joint there so you get a nice tiled effect. And I will do this all the way up and then when we're finished and the glue's dried, what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll trim the shingles to length on this side and this side and that way everything will look neat um, and it'll be really solid. And then when we get to the top, these little pieces here, keep these, these are your, um, cap tiles that will go along the roof ridge here, um, so we'll do with those after. Right, next little tip as we approach the chimney breast here. Um, first of all, I've used all the same card side. You'll notice, let's get some card here, there's kind of two colours. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you use, as long as you use the same one, just to make sure that the texture is exactly the same when it comes to the painting stage. Um, and what we've got here is, because we've gone and put the chimney on already, we've got this little bit of roof here that has the chimney bricks overlapping. So all I'm going to do is just run my knife along here to create a slot. Um, and 
up under here. I think it's time for a new knife blade soon, just to get somewhere to tuck the tile that I've torn off here. And then what I need to do is just get a little bit of glue and push it up under the tile, um, because that's where these are gonna go. Then you just want to look to see how many of these you need. And then um, we're gonna tuck those tiles up and under. Uh, that seems like too many, so we need just one less. And then just push that up and under like that and then we can continue on uh, with the next row which will go up to the bricks and we'll finish having already done this side right and in no time compared to doing it individually we've shingled the roof this didn't take me long at all about 15 minutes and it's quite therapeutic actually cutting these tiles um, a few tips if you do get a little tiny gap here and there don't worry we will hide the imperfections during the painting stages um, and you can, of course, cut these. I have a couple of these I had to cut with a pair of scissors. Uh, it's only card, so it's easy to work um, to fit along here. And we've got this overhang, like we said, here, which we'll trim to size. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away for an hour and leave this to dry. And then I'm going to come back with a pair of scissors, and we're just going to run the scissors up here to cut. Um, cut everything flush and then we will finish with another balsa beam uh, and that is everything then done obviously I've got some windows still to fit um, but then we will come back and do a couple of minor corrections you have to got some tiny brick gaps here that now the glue's dried I can insert some sort of brick scraps um, and we will be on to the final stage which is adding all the details and this is where you can go as crazy as you like and um, there's bits in the kit there's a few tips and tricks I'll go through on what we can add to the kit and then it, we can call it done and be moving on to the painting which will follow in a separate video. And what I've done now is cut a second fascia board uh, to go on the outside of where we trimmed up the tiles just to give it a really nice finish. Yes, it's technically not how a roof works, these shingles should overhang, but this looks nicer and that's what we're going for. So now I'm gonna put it up on its end uh, like this and just put something on top to weigh it down so it doesn't move around. And what we're gonna do now is get the small squares uh, that are on the frame like this. We're gonna pinch fold them in half. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of them prepped. These are gonna be the ridge cap tiles. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of glue up underneath. Uh, we're gonna put that on like that. And then I will just quickly zoom in to show that we're gonna have a slight overlap as we go down. Um, so that's the look we're looking for. We'll go all the way up here. And then when we get to the, to the chimney, we'll just trim um, to fit alongside. Right, and there we have it, the finished house. We've got the roof ridge on like this, looking really nice from both sides, looks great. And all the tiles have been tidied up really well, gone through and filled all the bricks. So now we're gonna look at some of the detailing uh, things that you can do. We've got the 3D printed parts, but before we get onto that, there's a few things you can do with the simple tools of a pencil and a knife. Right, well the first little extra details we can add is some uh, nail holes or um, nail marks. So what we can do is either do one in the middle or if you're feeling really bold, do two like this and just pushing into the balsa with a pencil to make little indent marks like this. Um, can add uh, a great sense of realism once you go around the whole building and do that. I've already mentioned before, um, making sure the wood looks nice and weathered, but now's a good chance to go around and just chamfer any edges that look a little bit too neat. Um, you can nick some of the tile edges if you want to with a knife, if you feel really uh, bold, because there's a lot of tiles there. To and you could even go around and take out one or two tiles. This is a fantasy house after all, so if it looks a little weather beaten, that's a nice addition. Um, and beyond that, you can use your pencil to do some cracks in the plaster. So again, all you're doing is drawing into the surface of the foam with the pencil and it takes the indentations really nicely. So just a few things like this um, can really add, add a bit of extra character. And this is again where the creative flair outside of the kit takes over and you can do whatever it is you feel like you want to do. And then we will do the last little bit which is to grab the frame of the 3D printed parts. And here's a sprue of 3D printed parts. I personally would prime them whilst they're still on the sprue. Uh, that's the best thing to do. Um, but here I'm showing where that they can go on the outside. So you've got little um, torches, uh, lit ones, unlit ones, candles on little holders, all things that we can glue on to add a little bit of extra detail. But given that this is foam and the super glue would eat into it and not really stick to the balsa wood properly, um, PVA glue, a good decent one, will be fine. They shouldn't be heavily handled by the 3D printing parts anyway, so it won't be a problem. Um, and what we can do is just take a pair of clippers. Uh, no need to wash these parts or anything like that. They're not cast resin, they're printed resin. Uh, let's have some torches 
uh, on the outside of this one we're just going to take our little pair of cutters here or side cutters and snip off uh, the part by the base here like that and then it will lift off the frame and if you've got a little bit of uh, leftovers behind here you can just clean them up with a knife okay what i'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue on here don't need a lot just to hold these in place and then i think something like next to the door would look nice so uh, let's find a good attachment point oh this nice tall vertical brick here looks good so i'm just going to put them on and press into place and uh, yeah just a couple of these dotted rounds maybe on these underhangs here and uh, one on the corner to add just a little bit of character to your building um, or any other builds that you work. So I'll get these final windows in because I had to cut myself some spares and uh, we'll take a look at what it looks like overall and, and talk about the painting bit. Right, so you can see here we've completely finished the kit now. The windows are in and the torches, etc., on the outside detailing it up. Um, it's come out really nicely and next stage will be to paint this. So I'm going to work on a painting video. In the meantime, if you've built the kit and are waiting, um, what I would suggest is you mix together Mod Podge or a quality PVA glue with a little water in it and about 20% black paint and give it an all over coat. This one seals all the foam, etc., and um, gets in all the crevices um, and uh, bonds everything together in one uh, continuous piece and also acts as a great primer um, for the latter painting stages. So that will be the next video in the series. Right, so as you can see, that's really easy to build and go through the step by step. Hopefully this video helps people either be inspired or take interest in this kit. And of course, this is out there for those of you that have bought the kit and want to know how to go about uh, getting rolling with it. Again, check out Ian's video on at White Shark Gaming Studios. And uh, yeah, if you build one, uh, please share along uh, your progress, etc. on the social medias because I'd love to see what people do. Thanks very much and more of these coming.